I removed the IC of this circuit. I turn the device on to see how much voltage we have at the output. The multimeter is in DC mode and connected to the output of the device. Well, we have 21 at the output, but how did we do it? Let's do this together. What do you think will happen if we remove the IC from this circuit? Does the circuit turn on or not? The circuit turns on, but there is a secret. In this type of circuit that use the drive transformer. It is the start of work with the drive transformer. After connecting to the city electricity, the current enter the main transformer through the common head of this capacitor and enter the drive transformer. But how do power transistor turn on? Each power transistor has a resistance of 390 kilo ohm. In some circuit, such as this circuit, two resistors of 150 kilo ohms are connected in series and receive voltage directly from storage capacitors. This resistance provides the necessary voltage to turn on the transistor at the first moment. We know that the direction of the flow of electron is always from negative to positive. But conventionally, we consider the direction of the flow of electrons from the positive side. Now, let's check the direction of the current. In the first half cycle, the current enters the circuit from the common head of the capacitors. And it reaches this resonance capacitor. The capacitor is short-circuited in the first moment. The current passes through this pass. It reaches the collector of transistor Q1. From this route and through R8 and R9, it reaches the base of the transistor and the power transistor is activated. The current goes through the collector to the emitter and again from this pass, it goes back to the capacitor. So the switching in this circuit is started with the drive transformer or pulse transformer. In the second half cycle, the flow of current started from the positive side of the capacitor C2. The current reaches the base through R14 and R20 and turn on the transistor Q4. The current enters the collector and throws the emitter and from this pass, first enter the pulse transformer and from this pass, goes into the main transformer. It then enters the capacitor and returns to the common end of the two capacitors. So, we found out that the beginning of switching in the circuit is with the help of pulse transformer. The point head of the pulse transformer causes the transistor to turn on and off alternately. So, the path of the current in each half cycle is like this. This is the first half cycle. This is the second half cycle. When the switching is started, voltage is generated in the auxiliary coil. This voltage is used to turn on the IC and other parts. The voltage of the auxiliary coil reaches the middle pin of the pulse transformer and the base of the amplification transistors. When the IC is turned on, the pulses start and from now on, the circuit control is done with the help of the IC. The IC receives the necessary feedback from the output section. So, we can remove the IC from the circuit, but 
we have no control over the output voltage and current. According to the secondary winding of the main transformer, a certain voltage will be generated at the output. Of course, this voltage depends on several factors, the type transistor, the pulse transformer, and the main transformer. If we take out the IC, the circuit does not work. We have a make a small change to the circuit. When the voltage reaches the center pin of the drive transformer, because the other two pins of the pulse transformer are connected to the middle pin, so it creates magnetic field in the primary coil and the create magnetic field causes induction in the secondary coil. This causes the switching to not work properly. So we must disconnect these three pins from the board so that only the secondary winding works. In this mode, there will be no interference in switching. Now pay attention to the circuit. This is a pulse transformer or a drive transformer. These are the transformer pins. It is enough to separate these pins from the board. It is enough to remove the solder around them. Now I turn on the circuit. Pay attention to the output capacitors. The working voltage of these capacitors must be above 25 volts. If the working voltage is low, it will definitely explode. I measure the output. We have about 21 volt at the output. The LED is also on. This is the maximum output voltage of this device. I turn off the device. I remind you again that there is no control in the output voltage and current in this mode. The auxiliary coil continues to produce voltage, but this voltage no longer reaches the pulse transformer. If there is a fan in the circuit, the high voltage will cause the fan to burn. Then disconnect the fan from the circuit. Thank you for watching the video.